Hey everyone, and welcome back to, I, I'm going to assume, the last of the Dead Kel episodes, because I think we're just going to go stab his face in, that's going to be the end of it, because he doesn't have any more minions to kill. Unless we have a large dungeon to go through, and then we encounter him. Yep, speaking of, gotta restart the timer. Whoop. Yeah, so we tried on the Watcher armor, and it turns out we have an incomplete set, and it's Sorcerer it's armor. Yeah, it's Sorcerer armor, so it's not as good of protection... And it really just doesn't have the sheer depth and breadth of nonsense stats that I have. Uh, it's a gay dang Kruderk. Kruderk. I don't like Kruderks. I don't know, for whatever reason, they, these are just the most annoying enemies to me. I think it's I because- I don't like that bulge in their tail, right yeah. at the base. Yeah. I think it's mostly because they have a bunch of, like, semi-unblockable abilities that I don't... Well, they have, like, blockable, but they knock you back in very annoying ways. Hey, look, another dragon thing. Yeah. It's dead. We still don't know what they are. Have no idea. And we never will. Funny thing is, I kind of know some people that worked at Studio... Th well, one guy that works at Studio 8, or know of him and could probably ask him... And I'm incredibly tempted to just, like, send him an email. Just be like, so, you know, I love your uh, Tower of Guns game. But can you tell me some of the, like, things that were never explained in this game? And I feel like that would be kind of weird. And also probably not the kind of thing he'd even have an answer for. Which mm -hmm. is a shame. May maybe later when we're uh, bigger in the industry and actually are a part of it. Because it would be really cool to just go be like, wait, why, why is why this Why are these thing? dragons always corpses and we no. never actually find yeah. living ones? What the hell is this thing? Please explain. <laughs> that would be amazing. Actually, that would be really cool if I could become a big enough YouTuber that I could just, like, interview developers and creative directors and just ask them about weird plot holes and stuff. I mean, as much as you want to be a big YouTuber, we're... Yeah, we, if we got other things artists. to work on. First and foremost. I want to be both. Yeah. Eh. I love, I love the Bogart designs. I want to high five whomever came up with these guys. And then shake them for not doing more, but mostly high five them. This is like... Actually, I've noticed this one hasn't had... Oh, this one's had a fair amount of repetition. It's mm, a thresh. bog thresh. Like, the bog thresh is a pretty cool thing. And actually, if you notice, the, this Thresh, I think, actually has a slightly different design than the other ones. Maybe not. I don't know. It's uh, kinda... It looks pretty similar. It's not dead yet. <laughs> Look dead. Choo-choo. How are we doing? We're doing plenty fine. I do have to say, though, that this is probably one of the least interesting of the sections we've been through. Because it feels... Ah, uh, you know what? No, it actually looks pretty good, especially Train. now that we're coming up to this area. So let me guess, this door is locked and we have to go open up, yep. A nearby lever. Yeah, so we gotta go down both paths to find the lever to flip and open up the big door. Just calling it now. And there's another bog thresh. And there's the lever. Hello, lever. Can't open lever until you kill out the bog thresh. Probably. You know, clear the room be able to use things inside it probably i really should be using these potions mm -hmm. I, I mean we're pretty much done with this game and i've only ever used like a couple of potions the entire way through like we used and abused healing potions early on. oh i want to see if i could get the treasure but the treasure is mad sucks as in i'd probably get cursed for trying to open it again it's kind of funny, in most games, like, treasure chests are very meaningful. Like, um... Zelda, they definitely yeah, are. With the exception of the ones that give you rupees, and you're like, Ah, my wallet's already full, don't give me rupees. Yeah. Because in that game, if you open a chest, it's done for. Yeah. And if you, if you don't have enough room in your pocket for rupees, then the rupees disappear forever. That room is just a dead end. Funny. But, like, uh, I'm I'm going with... Oh, you know what? I think I know a uh, series I'd like to record. Hmm? Uh, not with you. Uh, Temple of Elemental Evil. Just a Dungeons and Dragons Let's Play. 
But, um... Well, what, what, what do you mean? It doesn't have any plot, which is why I wouldn't involve you in it. But Still, um, I like Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather do, like, Neverwinter Nights or something. Yeah, Neverwinter Nights I've been wanting to do. But, like... In, in, like, the Baldur's Gate series or Temple of Elemental Evil, going through a treasure chest is actually incredibly, like, worthwhile. Just because, you know, it's very hard to get your hands on powerful magical equipment, so, like, every little bit helps. And every little bit, like, gold-wise helps, and you're constantly just trying to get up a, get a leg up on equipment. But this game, we pretty much filled out our equipment, like, what? 30, 40 years, years ago, episodes ago, <laughs> and haven't switched it out since because crafting is just so much better than picking up found objects. And then in MMOs, you either have to grind various dungeons to get a good set of armor, pay an extremely high amount of money... Just to for, afford it, yeah. Or just to even craft it. But, like, in that... I guess this game kind of follows MMO logic where... Gear is infinitely cyclical, so treasure chests are are meaningless. They're just, you know, maybe another thing, maybe. But chances are it's just another piece of vendor trash to be sold off in favor of the war effort. Hey, it's another one of these guys. I like these guys. They're funny. So, is there a way in this game to craft armor but then apply a different skin to it, or no? No. Ah. I wish. That would be amazing. Like, if, if you could salvage various armors for their skins. But you can't. And it it's a damn shame. Because that would be so cool if we could salvage the warden armor. Mm-hmm. And... Oh, there he goes, throwing a bogart at you. Yep. I'm trying to just wail on him until... Uh, before our potions run out, but they... They just keep stunning me. Well, Pain. he's stunned right now. Yeah, I know. This is just frustrating. I don't know. <sighs> Melee combat in action games is kind of a pain. Like, you'd think it would be better if the stuns worked on a damage threshold. Like, that Bogart hit me once and my character's just like, <sighs> And we took barely any damage. Barely, but like even the smallest of enemies is enough to give your character a major amount of pause. Which, I mean, it's not a terrible thing, but it definitely does make everything just feel kind of... Mm, pointless? Not pointless, just like... Over-exaggerated. Because I'd totally be okay with like... Well, I guess Dark Souls is kind of a good equivalent. Where like... The higher and heavier your armor is, the less you get knocked back by things, mm -hmm. which is cool. But if you're like, but wearing, then you have less speed. Yeah, you have less less speed. So it, it balances out in incredibly interesting ways, and there's like a nice balancing act that you can do just to get everything set up and right. Yeah, because I have a feeling that at least in the MMOs that we've played, that armor actually sets a like a real advantage to the heavy armored classes. And it's odd because, you know, if you're a mage class, you're expected to wear light armor. And it's not enough to necessarily compensate with your magic, just the sheer amount of survivability that uh, it heavy depends. armor classes do. Take World of Warcraft. I think they're a better example. So, warlocks are actually one of the scarier enemies to fight, or at least used to be. Even though they're light armored, they fear you, they life drain you. They run you around and you can do nothing to them. Whereas in World... Well, not World of Warcraft. Uh, whereas in Guild Wars, I feel like a lot of the... A lot of the... Come on. A lot of the like classes and stuff, especially because we do largely PvP things, if you're low armor, you really can't survive prolonged combat. So from a PvE standpoint... Since your specific da damage output, output doesn't matter as much, there's an advantage to being a heavily armored class with like a high amount of healing abilities. Because, especially when you're like a large zerg of 50 people, your individual stats are meaningless as opposed to your ability to survive things. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I just have a feeling that 
being light or me even medium armor is just you're too flimsy yeah which i mean is mainly just uh point against the guild war system in a way i don't know I, I, like... I just really thought that being a magic user you sacrifice armor for abilities that you know allow you to do more damage and avoid damage. combat in interesting ways Mm -hmm. But as it stands, you just kind of stand slightly towards the back away from enemies, hoping for the best. Or that you, you have don't to get really like, maneuver. Yeah. And especially when there's, like, everything is just damaging all around, it seems, I don't know, pointless to do even the maneuvering after a certain point. It's just like, well, I'll try and avoid what I can, but it like, seems... It's just sad that some classes have become prejudiced against because of... Oh, by the way, this is the guy up ahead. Ooh. The god creature. See, it does look like a giant tree. Yep. Oh! You know how there was uh, trees... You know how there was Tree Sauron? Tree Sauron? Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, Suron the Green. Oh, Suron the Green. So this is the red tree. Yeah. Why not? They're probably the same thing. Well, so what are the other trees? I don't I know. I thought he said that there were other ancient trees. Yeah, probably. He's a tyrant. Nothing more. We're captives here so long as Akara guides us. All my life I've heard of his benevolence, his protection. What's he protecting me from? I'll tell you. Freedom. A whole world awaits us beyond these shores. A world I'll never discover. Oh, uh... Well, let's talk to the tree. Treasure chest. See what it has to say for itself. Yeah, be interesting. Except for I bet Dead Kill is gonna ambush us in this little platform area. Be interesting. Well, let's talk to Akara. Come, Quickling. We have been waiting for you. Speak with us. Speak with Akara the Exile. Oh, wouldn't it be sad if he was part of the mainland with the other trees and his island drifted off? Yeah, I could see that. We are the Exile. We did not desire to play the games of men and monsters. So we departed, seeking solace. On this island we took root, and here we first heard the cries of the lost, touched the tears of the broken. Quicklings bear such fragile yearnings. You need guidance. You need protection. I guess you are exiles. The souls at rest above know nothing. They know only what we reveal. They know what brings them peace, what gives them hope. That is how it was for many passing seasons. But now, all of it must come to an end. We are but one branch of the great tree, the ring of Kiyozai, the watchers of our withering world. Only as a god would we be heard, and only as disciples would the people listen. To plant seeds, to inspire hope, to save, that is why we reached out to the Quicklings. But look at what our influence has wrought. Such a monster can only be born from power, and power will be the tool to unmake him. That is what we want. The unmaking of Dead Kel. I was hoping we'd be doing more nautical warfare in this one. Oh well. Big plant tree. 
We were the Twelve. The sons and daughters of Ilagru, and the branches through which all wisdom whispers. We are the Ring. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely related to the green eye tree thing. So there are 12 trees. Yeah. We only ever will see two of them. I thought there was a third tree somewhere. Yeah, yeah, uh, the green guy referenced the other one, but I don't think we ever saw it. You don't think it's the, like, Sorrows tree, do you? <sighs> it didn't talk, though. Maybe we never tried, because there's no reason to. But I wouldn't be surprised if the gallows tree was another one. Yes, quickly. That is why I created the Scion. You are the vessel through which destruction will finally find dead Kel. That was always the purpose of the blessing. To give one individual the power to end this grievous cycle. Now. Do what you came to do. End him. And end us. Think of it as one last offering to a grateful God. Akara will be no more. So it wants to be killed. Aw, the poor thing. So. It has come to this. I have nothing left to give you. Nothing but my hate. Nothing but my blade. From the moment that you crawled across our beaches, Akara has beckoned to you. He has called you by name, through Alder, through the old man Key, and perhaps even through me. In you, Akara can purge himself of any guilt. That is why you must die, because you have been given all the tools with which to conquer me. But dead Kel does not surrender. You know, we only got a 2% experience boost and 10% damage to elemental damage. That's not exactly that much power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say I imbued myself with a sword, and that sword gives me the power to uh, stab him. <laughs> okay. The Alpha surprised me. Their war galleys waited just off the coast. Mages at the ready. It was over in seconds. Broken and bloody, I washed into these forgotten caverns and prepared my soul for eternity. It would have been a good place to die. That is when Akara, the fool, took it upon himself to save me. I had cheated the gallows, you see. I deserved that death in the cavern. I had won. He do, his design is definitely inspired by, um, oh shoot, Davy Jones from the Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, the one, the one weird foot and the one boot? I don't know. Just like the whole half and half thing. Yeah. I just say I'm sorry. Spare me your pity. All I want is the power and that is lost to me yet again. Many have died. What is one? I do have to say he's not a compelling villain, though. He's just like, kill me, but I'll try and stab you. Out of jealousy? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I am a predator. Killing is what sustains me. But the sea does not judge. It only silences the screams. All I've ever done, I've done to survive. No one knows that truth more than I do. And you believe you are the one who will fix Akara's mistake? No, not like this. I will take what belongs to me, what I should have received in exchange for my free will. I will get it from Akara, or take it from you. It feels kind of weirdly cyclical there. He's like, I should be dead, but uh, you're not going to be the one that kills me. But, you know, kill me, he, please. He never wanted to be conquered by anyone. It, it's just confusing. Like, I'm not entirely clear on what he wants out of this. Apart from the power, yes. But he's also like, I should be dead. 
Because he wants to die, but he probably wants to kill Akara first for making him live another who knows how long. Yep. Was he shooting me with stuff? Oh, kinda. So, I, w I was considering blowing my fate power, but it looks like he's doing the whole... Oh. Disappearing thing? Yeah. Well, you know what? He did it anyway. Balls. Well, I mean, I might as well use this to just, like, wail on all of his little dudes. There's it, Cal. Oh, there he is, yep. Hello! Yeah, he does that, like, weird suck-up move. It's kind of frustrating. And then becomes untargetable. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. I'll just use this to make this section go faster, question mark? Okay, well, find Kel, if you can. No, before he's... Before your thing runs there. out. There he is. Oh, that's a, just a fair guard, Captain. There's Cal. Wait, wait. No. no. You can't do the special move. Oh, no, because he had to go invincible one more time. See? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to. That kind of sucks. Oh, well. Oh, this is new. Oh, there's a ball and chain. Oh, hey, when we finish this quest, we're actually going to be max level, too. And now the cave is falling apart. Because apparently... What's that purple blot? That is the icon for Akara. I see. Yeah, I was confused by that, too. But it makes sense. See, this is pretty with the, like, weird kind of corally plant stuff. Mm-hmm. Is that what I supposed to just a scrape? Hey, we're outside, sort of. Yeah, let's take a bit to go sightseeing. Yeah, except we should get Not much of a sight to see. It's kind of, kind of boring down there. At least it's not like The Legend of Zelda, where it's like, you have a timer to get out of the like, tower. Here you go. Yep, nope. Um. Yeah, what was I playing recently that had a really ridiculous... Oh, I was playing Sleeping Dogs. Mm -hmm. It wasn't quite like timer to get out of the tower, it was you were carrying a bomb and you had to get to a place within 10 seconds or you're going to blow up. And the, like, the thing was half a mile away and it's like, yes, I sprinted the all the way there. The trains have been very active today. This entire weekend they've been incredibly active. Uh, my friends were making fun of me for it yesterday too. Really? During your game? Yeah. Yeah, we were playing loadout and it's like choo choo and it's like, <laughs> Carl stop it with the trains. It's like, I can't help it. <laughs> I'm a train person. I'm homeless. I actually just live on a train, stealing free train Wi-Fi. <laughs> no. Actually, I don't know if the passenger trains ever do really honk, do they? Yeah, all, all trains have to honk. Because uh, we've got the intersection with the road. Yeah. So they honk no matter what, just to let anybody know. It's a very stupid idea to try and just, like, blitz across the tracks before those things come down. And or ooh, this nice little sight here. Dead cow dead. Hakara gone. Yet here we stand, alive and with the bright waves out ahead of us. This life. It is all I know. As much as I desire to leave this place, it is my home. And it needs me now more than ever. My mother is dead. My father is broken hearted. There's much to be set right. Heroic fate. Uh, hey, everybody's moved into the town now. Hey now where do we go? We go over here and talk to Key. We're almost done. We're so very close. Then we got some side quests to do, and I'll, I will probably only leave. Well, isn't it only one side quest? Well, or there were a couple of ones go? around at the like weird little camps, and I don't think those are going to be worth anything. Mm -hmm. I saw you coming. The cards spoke to me like they have not in ages. You are the one I was marooned here to find. My path has been made for me. You see, there are few in this world who can 
truly plot its course. Many try, but all of them fail. Great figures always rise up. Sometimes the gods create them, and sometimes they create the gods. But true heroes are born. Or in your case, reborn. You are the scion now, and you carry with you the blessing of Akara. There is no one on this earth more worthy of being called a god than you. And so I will go to prepare the way. For when you come, the world changes, and the people must be ready. Hmm. Yay, we're a buccaneer! <laughs> I didn't know we get two Twist of Fate cards. This is cool. Extra physical re resistance, reduce equip requirements, chance to critical hit. Your and that's destiny it. Destiny is yours. Level up. This is max level, too. Mm hmm. I'm surprised at max level you don't actually get max. Yeah. Unless there were books you hadn't read. I know, so there were a couple books. Oh, uh, I think there were a couple of books I haven't read yet. Yeah. I don't really feel like it, though. Well, that's interesting. Now you're a god. Well, no, he just calls this a god. I would disagree. I oh, know, hey, apparently course. you can keep leveling. That's neat. Maybe the DLC increased it, but I definitely heard that level 40 was max. All right. So that is really the end of Kingdoms of Amalur. We've got a couple other, like, little things to take care of, but uh, apart from going and picking up all the side quests and seeing what's actually interesting and worthwhile... Including the mansion that's yeah. haunted. So the finale, as weird as it will be, is going to go get us that crazy-looking Gravehall mansion. So, we'll see you guys then on the kind of finale-slash-closing thoughts of everything. Awesome.